Paymore Rajabov is the modern king of the King's Indian, and anybody who plays the King's Indian defense owes him a very sincere debt of gratitude. You may remember that Garry Kasparov, the world champion for 15 years, played the King's Indian. Then Kromnik beat him with the bayonet attack, and he gave up the King's Indian. Well, enter Rajabov. He says, not so fast, my friend. The King's Indian is, King's Indian is still very much a playable opening, and he played it even against Kromnik, held his own. He says that while the opening may not be a perfectly correct choice, the unstoppable threats that black has makes white's practical challenge so great that it can be played even at the highest level. And in this game, Rajabov has black against none other than, none other than Fabiano Caruana, whose peak rating I think is 2844. Uh, at the time this game was played, which is the Paris Blitz, he was rated 2820. Rajabov was rated 2765, although he's been rated over 2790s. In other words, this is the peak. These are the best of the best. So we're going to see, is Rajabov right? Are the practical threats of a King's Indian so ferocious that even against a world elite player like Caruana, they create immense practical problems? Let's dive in and see. Welcome to Chess Dog. My name is John Montgomery. Caruana plays d4 and if you want to play the King's Indian, it's a defense against d4. You, the only opening you can't play it against is e4. d4, c4, d4, knight f6, excuse me, c4, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, e3. So Caruana takes a more restrained approach. The most common idea might be castling and then e4 to get the full pawn center. So, but Caruana just plays e3 takes it easy, and, and the, the disadvantage of this, of course, is that it's not as aggressive for white, but the advantage is it's a little harder for black to generate some of that nasty counterplay that black wants to generate. Let's see how Rajabov does it in this game. He castles, bishop to e2, and white's usual idea in this structure is to just gain tons of space on the queen side, play a4, b4, b5, and just rush black on the queen side, while making it a little bit harder for black to attack on the king's side. d6, castles, knight b to d7, knight c3, e5. So when Caruana didn't play e4 he, and played the pawn to e3, he left his own e4 square a little vulnerable. So Rajabov would like to take that e pawn and stick it into e4 like a bone in the throat and cause Caruana all kinds of irritation in the center of the board and on the king's side. So he plays queen to c2, Caruana, to control that square. Rook to e8 to back up that pawn. There's a battle over that e4 square. Rook to d1, placing the rook opposite the queen. Queen to e7, again supporting the e4 push. And now b4. And in the year before this game was played, Caruana had won this position uh, against... Uh, who, who did he play in that, uh, in that game? Uh, Savchenko. Uh, so he had played this and done well. Well, now he's playing Rajabov. Let's see how it turns out this time. Rajabov is able to play e4, right? So black attacks in a way that's a little different than in the normal King's Indian defense. Usually he wants to move that knight at f6 out of the way, play f5, but here that would be a little too risky. So he plays e4, knight to d2. So white wants to capture that e4 pawn. If for some reason black were to lose that e4 pawn, he'd probably just be lost. He really needs that pawn to be completely defended in that position. And by the way, the plan that black has in this position is the, the one that white plays in a King's Indian attack, if you ever play King's Indian attack. So knight to f8. So black's basic plan is to play h5, h4, and even h3, if white will let, let him. Play the knight at f8, to h7 and to g5, and the bishop at c8 goes to f5 to help strengthen that pawn at e4, and then he attacks on the king's side from that position, which shouldn't be too hard because he's got a whole mass of pieces aiming at white's king. Bishop to b2. Uh, white still wants to break through on the queen side. He wants to, his plan is to basically break through on the queen side so fast that black doesn't have enough time, or Zhabov won't have enough time to carry out his attack. Bishop to f5, and you see all of the pieces Rajabov has dedicated to defending that e4 pawn. He knows how important it is. He's got the rook, the queen, the knight at f6, the bishop at f5, all over defending that important pawn. h3, 
h5. He continues with the standard plan. Knight to b3. Um, this is a little bit risky on the part of Caruana. Uh, the recommended move, the main move here is knight to f1. You want to keep, you want to keep a piece over by your king as a defensive unit. But Caruana says, no, I'm going all in with knight to b3. But look at all these pieces black has over here. And white's king is starting to look a little lonely, seems to me. G5. So he decides to clear the g6 square for the knight. Instead of playing knight h7, g5, he clears out the square at g6. Not a subtle move. Rajabov is playing for mate. d5. Gaining space, opening the long diagonal for the bishop at b2, and also creating this little square at d4. So a knight might be able to hop in there and uh, have access to some very nice squares. So Rajabov had played very aggressively up to this point, but now he plays a series of moves that are a little more passive probably than he should. Of course, I only know this because of a post-game analysis, but uh, he plays the bishop back to g6. I suppose worried that if the knight goes to d4, it'll hit the bishop. However, a better move probably was knight to g6, and if the knight goes to d4, just play the bishop back to c8. It has as much control over the king side at c8, really, than it does, it does at f8. But he tucks the bishop back to g6. Now c5. Caruana begins his queenside play. Uh, knight 8 to d7. And this is sort of the second passive move from Rajabov. And this passes the advantage over the Caruana. He started very aggressively, and he should probably uh, should have stayed in that frame of mind. A move like uh, g4 uh, might have been better in this position. Knight 8 to d7. Knight to b5. Now Caruana has a real threat. He threatens knight takes pawn at c7, forking the two rooks. Now, Rajabov is forced to play the rook at e8 to c8 to defend that pawn. If he says, say, tries to play knight to f8 to allow the queen to defend it, that does not work at all because of cd6, cd6, and queen to c7. And Caruana would be completely in his position and would just be uh, totally winning. So he has to play another passive move. He's forced to play another passive move. Knight to a5. Rajabov plays a6. And again, the more aggressive option here, knight to a5, is the best. And after a6, Caruana plays c6. So let's take a little, make a little evaluation here. Uh, Caruana is completely winning. Okay. Uh, Rajabov had played two or three passive moves after a very aggressive opening. And Caruana just is totally dominating on the queen side. And if you put this in a computer, I don't know if it's plus five or something. Okay, fair enough. But let's see if Rajabov's theory that black has so many threats that in a practical game, the King's Indian is still a handful, holds true even against a 2,800 rated player. So pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, hitting the queen. Queen to e8, knight b to a7. So the rook at c8 is trapped, and Caruana grabs an exchange. He's going to get a rook for a knight. g4. So now, in a lost position, uh, Rajabov begins his attack. And again, computers say white has no problem, but in the real world, things are far from so easy. Takes, rook takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes a6, hitting the rook at c8 and actually trapping it, because after rook to a8, bishop to b7, the rook again has absolutely nowhere to go. That's a second exchange, so Caruana is really starting to collect a lot of material here. g3, piles forward, at least he wants to wreck Caruana's structure around his king, and that king over here, still looking kind of lonely, I have to say. fg3, knight to g4. That's a very dangerous place for a knight. You don't want that hovering around your king, aiming at the e3 square. Bishop takes g7. King takes g7. Now, this does get black strong, dark squared bishop off the board. But by moving the king to g7, the queen has much more convenient access to the h file. Queen to c3 check. Knight d to f6. Now, we talked about how white always has to play very precisely against a king's Indian. And Caruana's next move throws away his advantage. He played king to f1. 
He's thinking, I have a huge material advantage. Uh, Rajabov's going to bring the queen down here. I'll just move my king over to the other side of the board, and I'll just use my material advantage to win the game. The stronger move is rook to f1, which looks dangerous, because now queen to h8 actually threatens mate at h2. But after rook takes knight, if queen h2, king f1, if queen to h1 check, king e2, queen g2, then boom, rook f2 is a discovered check. And white would actually win the queen in that case. But knight f6 and bishop takes a8. And this would be too much material. Uh, the knight at f6 is pinned by the queen at c3. So that rook to f1 was actually the best move. But after king to f1 already, with this huge material advantage, black has real dangerous threats. And white's advantage, if it exists at all, is quite small. Queen to h8, threatening to enter into Caruana's position. King to e2, queen to h2, attacking that g2 pawn. Rook to d2, and this actually is another uh, blunder. See how easy it is? I mean, there's, these are very natural moves. How could that be a mistake? But when you're playing against the king's Indian, natural moves can get you in real trouble. Uh, the best move here was to just play king d2 after queen g2 check, king c1, hiding the king away. And white is, white is still uh, a little bit better here. But after rook to d2, white is in real trouble. Already, all that material down, Rajabov has a vicious attack. Watch how he carries it out. First, he plays bishop to h5, setting up a discovered attack against the king. The computers say a little more accurate is rook to a3, because after queen a3, queen g2 check, king d1, queen g1, king c2, knight to e3 check. The king has to go to b3, because if it goes to b2, knight c4 forks the king and the queen. King b3, queen a1, and black is uh, a bit better. But by playing bishop to h5 first, Rajabov keeps that threat, but makes it, he sort of uh, turbocharges the th threat a little bit. Um, but computers show that if Caruana plays bishop a8, or takes the rook at a8, the knight e5 check, king f2, and you have a repetition. So he could survive the position with a draw in that case. But after bishop h5, he does not take the rook at a8. He plays what really is a more, much more natural move. King to d1, right? Get the king out of there. Makes a lot of sense. But now Rajabov plays the rook a3 idea, and now it is just a crusher. Not only does he have those threats we already looked at, but he's got that discovery from the bishop at h5. So queen takes a3, knight e3, which is a double check, and when you have a double check, the king has to move. You can't capture the checking piece, because there are two of them, and you can't interpose another piece between the line of attack, because there are two different lines of attack. So the king has to move. King to c1. Queen to g1 check, and now the king has to go to b2. Uh, it can't go to b3, and boom, knight c4 check is a fork. King to c3. Now, if he takes the queen right now, Caruana could retake Rajabov's queen at g1. So he first interposes with this check, queen to e3 check. And if, if he plays king to c2, which doesn't make much sense, queen a3 and mate would follow soon. So he goes ahead and grabs the knight. At c4, queen takes a3. Now, in just a matter of a, f <laughs> a few moves, it's gone from Caruana, like plus five, to Rajabov, like plus eight. I mean, it just switched over that fast, even though Rajabov was down a lot of material. That's the danger of the King's Indian, particularly in the hands of a, a genius like Rajabov, who really knows how to handle these King's Indian pieces. Knight goes back to d4, bishop to g6. Helps control that f5 square in case the knight wants to jump in and check. Knight to b3, knight to d7, then I can go to b6 or e5, delivering check. King to b5. Uh, it's obviously the game is over at this point. This was a blitz game, so Caruana was trying to hold on a little bit longer. e3, and there's no convenient place for the rook at d2 to go. If he goes to e2, then boom, bishop to d3 check, attacking the king and the rook would win material. So he goes to d4. The knight goes to e5, rook goes to e1, trying to maybe capture that pawn at e3. Bishop to f5, rook e3, and now, boom, bishop to d7, check. He wants to check the king, and he wants to distract that bishop at b7 away from this diagonal, so then he can reroute his own bishop to that diagonal and deliver mate. He wants to distract that bishop at b7, so the bishop goes to c6, which is forced. 
and then boom, bishop to c8, aiming at the a6 square. So at the moment, there's a threat of mate, either bishop to a6 or queen to a6. So knight to a5 to sort of block the communication between the queen and the bishop and the a6 square, but obviously then now the queen can just take the rook. And I believe Caruana lost before this move was played, but and a 28-20 rated player with a completely winning position in the King's Indian still lost. Why? Well, because of what Rajabov has already told us. There's a lot of venom in that opening. And in a practical game against the King's Indian, you're always in danger. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.